I am Anil Kumar. In this video, I am actually connecting many important concepts. I'll discuss about what are similar triangles and what is geometric mean theorem. Many of the examination style questions, especially in GCSE, are on this particular topic. We need to really understand this topic in depth to understand how do we solve these questions. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also, check our website for the latest updates. So in this video, we'll definitely talk about the geometric mean application. Let me first uh, say what it is. If we have a triangle, which is given to us as a right triangle, in which if I drop an altitude, CD as shown here, this altitude divides the hypotenuse AB into two segments, AD and DB. Now these two segments are related with the length of the altitude. And the relation is very simple. Relation is that this length P is geometric mean of the other two segments, which is, we can say P square is M times N. So that is what geometric mean theorem is. We'll actually take proof of this geometric mean theorem, understand it, and then solve the given question. So now the question for us is, relate the length of sides in the right triangle and complete the following table. So we are given a table here where the side lengths M, N, P, A and B are actually given to us, right? So in the first case, let's say question number one, we have M and N. These two sides are given to us. We need to find all the other three sides of this particular triangle. And in question number two, it is a practice question for you. Once you understand how do we do one, you need to do question two just to practice. And then three and four, we have a twist in it. What we have done here is we have given you the length of one of the segments and the altitude. And in the other case, we have actually given you bigger triangle side. So that becomes slightly more difficult. So I'll put this as a difficult problem. I'll call this as a bonus question. Correct. So let us first understand what is geometric mean theorem and then solve these four questions. Some of you can actually pause the video at this stage and answer the question and then check the result. So let's talk about the basic concept. As you know, Pythagorean theorem relates the three sides of a right triangle. So in our case, the right angle is at C, and therefore the hypotenuse is C. The other two sides are A and B. The relation is that C square is equal to A square plus B square. That is the Pythagorean theorem. Now what is geometric mean theorem? Just as I said, in a right triangle ABC, where altitude CD divides the hypotenuse into two segments. The length of the altitude is a geometric mean of the length of these two segments. Geometric mean really means that P is equal to square root of MN, which you would also write as P square equals to MN. Is that clear to you, right? So I'd like you to take a moment and then understand what are we saying here, correct? I hope you have understood. Now let's move on and see how do we prove this geometric mean theorem? Okay, so let's look into the proof of the geometric mean theorem. Okay, so again, we have the same triangle. As you know, side opposite to the vertex A is labeled as A, opposite to B as B, and opposite to C with lowercase c. The altitude here is CD, which is of length P, and it divides the hypotenuse into two lengths, M and N, as shown in the figure. Now, we need to prove that P is equals to square root of MN 
which is the geometric mean theorem, which can also be written as p square equals to the product of these two sides. So we are saying that this square is the product of m and n. How do we prove it? Well, let's consider the two triangles, which are the right triangle ADC, which is the triangle on the left side, and the right triangle BDC, the other triangle on the right side. So these two triangles we are going to consider now. As you can see from here, both these triangles have one right angle, right? That's very clear. So that means one angle is same. So we can say angle ADC is equal to angle BDC, correct? Now let's look into the other angle. In this triangle, what is angle ACD? What is this angle? Well, this angle should be 90 degrees minus A, correct? 90 degrees minus A. Since we already have a right triangle, uh, smaller one right here, so the angle at D is 90, and therefore the angle ACD should be 90 minus A, right? Okay. Similarly, in the other triangle, if we consider the big triangle now, so in the case of this big triangle, what is the angle B? Well, we have a 90 degree at C, so this angle at B is also 90 degrees minus A. Now, that really means that these two angles are congruent. Do you see that? These two angles are both 90 minus A. And therefore, we can say what? Well, this is what I've written here. The angle ACD is 90 degrees minus A and B is also 90 degrees minus A. And that means that the angle ACD is equal to angle B, right? So we also have that this angle here is equal to that angle, correct? So we have two angles, AA. That means the two triangles are similar. Perfect. And therefore, angle triangle ADC is similar to triangle BDC. And this is from the property of similarity. Two angles are same then the two triangles are similar. Well, when the triangles are similar, then this ratio of the sides is exactly same. Correct? So let's find out the ratio of the sides. So we can now write that CD, which is opposite to angle A, the third angle, which is also same, CD over DB, right? Over DB, which is this side opposite to that angle, that is also equal is equal to AD over CD, right? So, so we have this particular property that is when two triangles are similar, then the ratio of sides is constant, right? So we have ratio of sides, corresponding sides. Is constant, correct? And they're exactly equal. Perfect. You can say equal also, right? Right. So now they are equal. Now we can actually cross multiply. So when you cross multiply, you get CD square is equals to AD into DB, right? That's what I've written. Now CD is the length of the altitude P. So P square equals to the product of the two segments into which the altitude divides the hypotenuse. So P square is MN. Is that clear to you? So this is a very important equation. I'd like you to pause the video, copy this equation, understand the proof, right? And now I think we are ready to solve our question. So let's take up example one now. So we now know that in this particular triangle, we have some very important relations. And that is that length P, the altitude, is equal to square root of MN. And we can also write this as P square equals to the product of M and N, right? And now from the bigger triangle, we can always use the Pythagorean theorem and relate the hypotenuse A in the triangle BDC and hypotenuse B in the triangle ADC as A equals to square root of N square plus P square and B is square root of M square plus P square, correct? So now, we can actually fill this table up. In the first question, we are given the values of M and N. That means we are given these two values. 
Now, the first step should be what? We know these two values and therefore we can now find the value of P. So we'll first find P. That is our first step. So we are given M is 8, N is 6, P square is M into N, product of 8 and 6 is 48, P square root of 48, which is written as 4 square root 3. Well, some of you may not know how to do this. 48, you could actually split into a perfect square, which is 16, right? 16 times 3. When you do the square root, Square root of 16 is 4, which comes out, and we are left with square root 3 in the bracket. Or you can also use calculator, correct? So you can use the calculator also to get this answer. But that's the exact value which we are looking forward to. Now, we know P. We can find the value of A. A is square root of N square plus P square, substituting the values given to us. N is 6. 6 square plus 48 is actually square of p, right? We just found 48 is p squared, and therefore we substitute this value 48. Now you can add in square root, and you get 2 square root 21. Perfect. I'd like you to actually do, as I did here, add them up, divide them into two parts, one, a perfect square, and then get your answer. So that will give you more practice with working with radicals, right? And some of you can always use the calculator to verify the result. Now, the third side, which is B, is square root of m square plus p square. Substitute the values which we just calculated, p square being 48, m given to us as 8. Substituting, we get B as 4 square root 7, right? So you got your answer. Now, it is also a good idea to verify the result, right? We just found what is m, m and n was given to us. We also found what is a and b. Now, you can verify is a square plus b square equals to c square right so you should do it right okay fine anyway let me write down the result here we got p as 4 square root 3 in this particular case the value of a was 2 square root 21 and the value of b was 4 square root 7 right so what you can do here is you can find what c is c is equal to m plus n right m plus n is 8 plus 6, which is 14. Now, you know what C is, so verify. Is 14 square equal to A square plus B square? Well, A square is for us what? 2 square root 21 whole square plus B is square root, which is 4 square root 7 whole square. If you verify, yes, it works out. So it is a good idea to verify your result also. So I hope you have understood. How do we solve such questions, especially related to the length of the altitude and the two segments it divides the hypotenuse into, right? Now, let's look into the second question. Well, the second question is very, very similar. The only difference here is the value of n, which is 5. I'd like you to do this question on your own. The answer, which you could verify, is like this. We get p as 2 square root 10 in this case. The value of A, I got as square root of 65, and the value of B was 2 square root 26, right? So I'd like you to do it on your own and verify the result. Now let's take example 3. In example 3, we are given the value of M and P, the length of the altitude. We have to find the length of the other segment. Well, it is a question of rearranging this formula, so that's what I've done. We know m is 4, p is 10, and we know p square is m times n. Substituting the values, we can find the value of n, which is p square, 10 square, which is 100, divided by 4, and we get n as 25. So let me write down n as 25 here. Now, once we know m and n, we know exactly how do we find a and b, as we did in our example number 1. So I'd like you to follow those steps and find the value for a and b. Basically, the steps were the value of a is n squared plus p squared, substituting 25 for n and 10 for p. We get the value of a as 5 squared root 29. So let me write down this value here, 5 squared root 29. Similarly, for b, it is square root of m squared plus n squared. m is 4, p is 10. Substituting, we get 4 squared plus 100, which is 116 square root, 2 square root 29 is the result. Once you get your result, I'd like you to verify the result also. Is 
c square equals to a square plus b square do as we did in one of our example does it make sense to you so with this you can do simple questions now let's get back to our last question i'm saying this is slightly difficult so it is a bonus question for you you can now pause the video answer this particular question correct you are given the values in this case of n and b right b is this segment they are far away right b and n how do we find the other three sides well this is not very easy we might use some concept of quadratic equations and factoring so in this case we need factor quadratic equations those concept okay let's see how to do it well the formulas are still the same we know how do we relate a which is square root of n square plus p square b which is square root of m square plus p square and we know p is square root of m and n we are given the value of n and b this time well let's begin with that what is given to us n is 12 b is 8. What is p square? Well, p square is m into n. At least we know what n is. Substituting n as 12, we get p square as 12m. So we get one equation, which is p square equals to 12m. Now, we can actually rearrange and write down p square as b square minus m square, right? So this p square is related with b and m, right? So, B being the hypotenuse along a side, B square minus M square is P square. So, we get our second equation, which relates the smaller triangle on the left side. Now, we can substitute this value in equation number 1. So, what we are doing now is sub equation 2 in equation 1. So, what we did was that since we know that P square is B square minus M square, right, and p squared is also 12m. So we equated them. 12m is, b is 8, right? 8 minus m squared. So we substituted the value. We got a quadratic equation now when we bring all the terms to the left-hand side. Bringing minus m squared, it becomes plus m squared. And 8 squared is 64, right? Taking to the other side is minus 64. So we do get a quadratic equation. Well, you can also use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. However, we know that product of minus 64 and sum of 12. Well, 16 and minus 4 works for us. So we could factor this as m minus 4 times m plus 16. Now that gives us two results. Now we know that m is always greater than 0, right? The side length has to be greater than 0. And therefore, our only solution is m equals to 4 right and we get m equals to 4 so now we know that m is 4 for us is that clear to you now we know what m is we can find the other sides very easily substituting the value of m in p equals to square root of 12 m we get 12 times 4 square root which is 48 and square root of 48 is 4 square root 3 which we did earlier also is that clear to you right so we have the value of p. Now the value of a is n square plus p square substituting n as 12, p as 48, p square as 48. We get a square root of 192, which is 8 square root 3. So we get the value of a as 8 square root 3. I like you to actually verify that this result is absolutely correct. Is that clear to you? So with this, we can end the video. I hope you have understood all the concepts the most important thing for us to remember the theorem itself right and also the proof and that helps us to solve all the four questions which we did example four does require extra skills so let me call this as an extended question correct i'd like you to uh, look into some of the related videos i've also provided a link and if you really want to learn from me you can always send an email on the email address given here. Thanks for your time and all the best.